uh, so to us, you know, um, everybody say that, you know, uh, tier two, tier three Indonesia is the, is, is the future for the next you know, five to 10 years. But, but, but the truth is that, you know, um, it is very tough to, it is very challenging to expand uh, like city by city and really um, account for like the, the infrastructure challenges there. So um, at least for us, uh, we, that is how we are going. So we have to have the goods near to where the, the, the resellers and customers are. Kembali hadir bersama saya Yen Yusra dan kali ini kita akan berbincang-bincang dengan Red S. Sudah hadir bersama kita Albert Ho. Hi Albert, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you guys? <laughs> Fine. So maybe you can tell me about yourself and maybe you can explain a bit about what is Red A. Hmm. Yeah, sure. So um, my name is Albert. So um, I'm a Chief Strategy Officer at uh, Red S. So we are a Series A um, social commerce company. Um, we started in, so um, for my role itself, I oversee, uh, you know, corporate strategy, uh, fundraising and investor relations. Um, I think the, the story in, you know, how we has started and moved to Indonesia uh, might, be, might, might be a little bit different as to, you know, um, other, um, other startups that, you know, started in Indonesia. So we, my co-founders and I, we actually met um, 10 years ago, right, during um, our ministry service where we wanted to build um, something together. Right, so in um in 2016, 2017, we actually built a payment uh, cross border payment called uh, Red X. So it was originally to connect um to connect Singaporean shoppers, Singaporean overseas shoppers, um to allow them to pay for cross border uh, payments cheaper, right? Using um from especially from overseas merchants like you know in on Amazon. Or especially the in uh, especially in China itself, right? From the merchants like Taobao and other uh Ding Dong, but for instance, yeah. So we so that is the origin of what we uh, originally um, built. So we we even went to China to meet um the different merchants, the different factories as well to negotiate certain deals as well. Yeah. So when we had, so we wanted to expand to across the region, right? To to Indonesia, to Philippines, to Vietnam, and so forth. But we realized that, you know, um, the way Singapore does cross-border commerce and even e-commerce, it's very different um, in, in how Indonesia actually does commerce. So when, when we were in Indonesia, so we, we tried to expand our solution, right? So it is a, it is a cross-border solution. It is a browser extension to be used for, um, you know, desktop purchases. But in Indonesia, we realized that, you know, uh, most of the purchases are actually um, on mobile, right? especially in in-app and so forth. And then when we when we explore like you know the different um, the different kind of uh, activity online, we realize that there is a there is a lot of informal um commerce being done uh, on on Facebook marketplaces, on Facebook groups, on WhatsApp groups, on even that very groups as well. Yeah, so we then this trend was very um, was quite insightful for us. You know we mm-hmm. see uh we see a long chain of um products being sold. Right, different kind of products, different services being sold in this kind of like marketplaces. Right, then we started poking around a little bit more. We started doing talking to users, and then we realized that you know, uh, the 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 whole the that there is so many um you know uh, middlemen, so many agents in this um scheme, in this whole value chain, and then uh the the way they get the goods from is also quite complicated. Right, so that's why we uh, that's why we started diving deep into this um, solution to actually do uh, this our product called Red S. So essentially, Red S is a is an all in one platform that allows uh, agents and resellers to basically source for products easily, and uh, you know we allow them to do marketing. We do, we deliver the goods for them, and we even collect payments for them. Yeah, so it allows anyone to basically set up their own uh, online business. Uh, you know, sell to their friends, sell to their community at a uh, zero cost because you don't have the whole inventory, you don't have to do pay any extra fees to, to do so. Yeah. So in a nutshell, that is, you know, a um, uh, rough story of how we started and what we ask is really set up to do. Okay, so basically you are targeting the uh, SME is in, in, in Indonesia, right? Or probably, probably specific like online shopper mm-hmm. or... Uh, maybe you can share what is your target users. Hmm. So we, so it's interesting. So we, we initially started with uh, dropshippers, but okay. you know, um, resellers who are using us to dropship to to the buyers. 
Um, but after um, after a while, you know, we realized that the, the users who are using us um, actually um, extended. Right? So now we are serving um, dropshippers. We are serving a lot of like um, home businesses. You know, they sell to their own communities. They use yeah. us to procure products as well. So that is something interesting that we have seen as well. Uh, we, we actually serve a lot of um, marketplace sellers. So they are using us to actually promote our products on Shopee, on Tokopedia and so forth. And then we are actually seeing um, a lot of like offline um, tokos, offline uh, warongs and uh, rukos that are actually using us to stock products to sell as well. So, and then increasingly, I think I think maybe because of like, you know, TikTok, um, so we are seeing, you know, some creators, some influencers actually using us to sell our beauty products on this um, platform also. Yeah. So, yeah, so that is, like, you know, the kind of like, yeah. user segment that we are actually seeing as well. So how is the pandemic affecting your business? Is it increasing more uh, uh, in terms of awareness and sales or, or is doesn't get any chance was uh, different whatsoever uh, from before the pandemic and after the pandemic? Yeah, I understand. So um, I think maybe one interesting note is, you know, um, the question um, that most investors or most other parties actually ask me is, you know, oh, um, you know, what is Red S, how is Red S different from, you know, so all the other social commerce um, companies yeah. out there per se. Right? And, and I believe, um, I believe, you know, it, it, it's, 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 it's really true. You know, we are seeing a lot of like news of like, you know, social commerce companies and uh, indirect um, B2B commerce companies getting funding and so forth. So I think our, uh, one of our differentiating factor is, you know, the fact that we are, um, uh, there are two key factors basically. So one of the facts is that you know we are predominantly uh, uh the the management for the S is uh, overseas team, right? So we are a Singapore team um who have um extensive experience in uh, actually in overseas in China especially. So um our past experience is you know um uh dealing with like overseas factories and so forth. So this actually allow us to you know um, build an overseas cross border supply chain to over to um, Indonesia. Right. So one of the big thing that we observe is that you know um the the products typically that we bring in from China is um is quite value for money. It's actually uh, pretty, it's actually uh, quite low cost as well. So this allows our resellers to actually get a substantial uh, you know commission. Yeah, commission as well. And uh, so I think for for actually for most um, social commerce platforms and most stuff, ultimately um, what the users really want is you know are you getting exclusive products? Are you earning um, a high enough money income? Are you you know um, promoting uh, different kind of unique products to your friends and to your networks? So um, that is one of our key um, advantage as well. And then this advantage uh, was actually, uh, it, it actually affected us quite a bit during last year. So last year, if you remember, so that is where COVID actually first struck um, yeah. China in, I think in uh, March, February and March 2020. Right? And then it first struck China and then it affected us quite a bit because um, all our factories are actually not exporting products and then the agro also. Yeah, so that, that, that hit us quite bad. Right. Um, and then um, from then on, we wanted to diversify our supply chain. So we also started working with uh, more and more um, local brands and local suppliers in Indonesia. Yeah. So I think um, since the pandemic, you know, the, the kind of products that we actually offer also changed. So right now we are seeing way more sales in, you know, products that are catered to more um, home and living, catered oh. to more household stay. Like for instance, um, uh, we sell one of our top seller is a uh, is a uh, kids um like pram and stroller. Right? So in in this pandemic situation, you know, um, families are actually spending uh, more time at home. So uh, they buy this kind of like toys and stuff. Yeah. So for us, we are seeing you know um um fashion and beauty products being affected as well. So um, I guess it's it's natural because you know people are actually spending uh less time outside right now. Yeah. But I think over the past few months, one year, we are seeing a recovery yeah, as people, you know, start to adapt to uh, post-pandemic life and so forth. There's a lot of social commerce platforms mm. right now in Indonesia. they offering different kind of services and some of them also uh, offer the same services like uh, Rate F. Correct, correct. Uh, what makes you uh, more, you know, more advantage uh, compared to other players? Is it in terms of the technology? Do you have a lot of community, you have a lot of 
like you said earlier, reseller and dropshipper that already joined uh, Red Hat. What is your, uh, you, what is your product uh, to differentiate with other platforms? Uh, good question. So, um, I think the I think there are, to, to us there are always um we always go back to the fundamentals and the the north star of what we are trying to do. Uh, I think for us the the north star is um actually the average um household uh, average commissions that the reseller mm-hmm. can get monthly from us. So um oh. yeah, so when so for, for resellers and our agents, you know they they are extremely entrepreneurial right they, they will they will gravitate towards whatever helps them to gain more income right um, be it reselling on Twitter, be it reselling themselves be it using other social commerce platforms so i think one distinguishing factor is the fact that we we have um, uh, our own supply chain that we built all the way down to the factories itself yeah so this um you know gives us uh, certain advantages. Right? So for instance, we can uh, we can bring in uh, unique and exclusive products from uh, from overseas, from China, from Korea especially, and then uh, it allows us to actually decrease the cost so that we pass on the cost savings to um, the resellers so that they can increase the commissions that they have as well. Yeah, and then the the second thing that we um, we, we think that it's very important is to really be on the ground and is to really form a community in each city, in each region, in each district also. Yeah, so for us, we, we have to have, we have a, a huge team of uh, offline, you know, uh, city managers, offline relationship community managers in the cities that we are in to really build a relationship with our resellers and our, uh, and our, and the community there. Yeah, so because uh, for us, each of the region, you know, have different uh, reselling characteristics and the kind of like behaviors per se, uh, even down to, you know, the, the how tech savvy you are and how much education we have to um, teach them. So, um, you know, in, in Jakarta, which is our, like, our HQ, so we try to, you know, produce a lot of like of online um, content that can be used um, nationwide, but um, you know, at the at the at the ground level, at the city level, there is a lot of like you know, uh, uh, localization basically that we hold a lot of like now actually um, a lot of still a lot of like offline, um, you know, small meetups, small copy chats that we have with the reseller and the agents, yeah. Um, so um, something that we uh, the third point that makes us slightly different is yeah. you know we we actually even um, have a team system. So we aggregate our resellers to work together in teams. Yeah. Mm. So for, for a lot of the social commerce, um, other, um, I won't say competitors, uh, because uh, I think the, the the market is so big that you know. Yeah. And actually, tier two tier three Indonesia is growing. Um, it's it's growing quite fast. That you know, uh, it's not a zero sum game basically. Yeah. So um, we so we have a team system where you know resellers actually work together in teams. Right, so uh, we built this uh, product because uh, we realized that you know there is a limit to how much we can actually teach the resellers per se, our team. Yeah, so we 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 sort of you know recruit like team leaders that actually help us to um, train and onboard uh, new resellers in their city as well. So uh, we also then we work more closely with the team leaders who you know um uh, help us to manage the resellers in their team. Yeah, so this helps us to really um, sort of like, you know, uh, decentralize like all the education effort to uh, this team leader who are also uh, in a way incentivized to uh, help us get more uh, new resellers and um, uh, basically uh, grow their reseller team as well. Yeah, so in a nutshell, it's really three key things. Right? So it's, uh, you know, having a differentiated supply chain and products. Yeah. Um, having a re- really close community in the different cities that we operate and having a team system where we group our resellers into city-based uh, teams. Yeah. So what is your strategy in terms of targeting the tier two and three, uh, three, three uh, cities in Indonesia? Mm-hmm. Is it something that you are already implemented or still in the roadmap for rate cap? Mm-hmm. So um when when we first started in twenty nineteen, so we 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 started in actually in uh, Jabodetabek Jab- 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 because uh mm-hmm. it is the it is the easiest to start. Yeah. Up. Yeah. But then um our strategy is always to expand uh to tier two and tier three. So um for us the the we the the key challenge that these regions face is a few problems from what we are, we are seeing. So um you know on the demand side on the user side. Uh, some of the 
that we sell to some of the agents uh, find it uh, a little bit hard to use our app. Yeah. Where they find it quite, they're, they're not as tech savvy as, you know, yeah. um, users in Jakarta, for instance. And then some of the other challenges, uh, for instance, they, they might not even know actually what a shopping cart button is, like the icon, what, what does it even mean? So that is mm-hmm. quite insightful for us. And then the other um, challenge they face, you know, is actually with um, internet connection. Right. So uh, when I went to Samarang, I, I actually saw that, you know, in some in some region, the, the internet connection is really not that uh, not that simple. And sometimes yeah. I don't even get the, the connection there as well. Yeah. And then on the supply side, we see that, you know, uh, most of the most of the, the suppliers and merchants are actually concentrated in the, the tier one areas in Jakarta, in mm-hmm. Surabaya. So in fact, I think um, about 70%, 67% of the GMV for like Shopee and Topet is still located in this area. Yeah. yeah. So um so for us we we need to have a way for us to actually decrease the the logistics cost to these um, users. So our strategy is uh, is just twofold, right? So it's a it's a hard and stop model. So we have um warehouses in different parts in Indonesia. So right now we have warehouses in uh in Jakarta, in Bandung, in Samarang, in Jogja, in Makassar, Manado, Palba, Medan, and so forth. So uh, we want to put the, the goods as close as possible to you know where the where our resellers start from. And then from there, uh, we, we actually use our teams, team leader as a spoke. So mm-hmm. they, they are actually the pickup points for these goods to be transferred to our team leaders there. Yeah. So this then from there we, we actually expand, you know, um, city by city uh, on the satellite cities around the, the hub in each area. Yeah. So uh, uh so to us, you know, um Everybody say that you know, uh, tier two tier three Indonesia is the is, is the future for the next you know, five to ten years. But 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 the truth is that you know, um, it is very tough to it is very challenging to expand uh, like city by city and really um account for like the the infrastructure challenges there. So um, at least for us, uh, we that is how we are going. So we have to have the goods near to where the 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 resellers and customers are. We have to build a team that you know cater to the local taste and demands in each uh, region there as well. Yeah. I didn't I didn't see uh I didn't I didn't see any you know problem that uh finally you are only focusing on the uh, the the biggest city only right I mean hmm. like you said earlier there's so much challenge yeah, to exactly. targeting to the tier two and tier three it's so refreshing for hmm. <laughs> from my point of view because a lot of Social commerce platform said that they are targeting uh, tier two, tier three, but doesn't explain about the challenge. So you you think that this challenge will will be more uh, doesn't decrease in the next year, or maybe you, you see in the future in Indonesian government with the infrastructure will decrease the challenge and helps the platform like you to to grow into the tier two and tier three. I, I think I think um for me I, I will give my you know perspective as a as an outsider because yeah. you know, I'm not a, a Indonesian person. So yeah. I think I think what I, I what I'm actually observing in you know in terms of like the the regional investments that the the Indonesian government is yes. putting in and I think um a, a large part of the 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 growth and um investment actually will come from the okay. huge tech companies and startups and investors because uh uh I, I know there are there, there, there's a lot of plans by the local government in this area to um you know um improve like improve internet yes. access for example i know uh indosa i know takum cell has been trying to make sure um internet access is you know yeah. way more stable for these regions and um yeah. i think i think uh, a lot of uh, investments also spend on you know like the actual infrastructure like you know having proper roads having proper uh transport per se there Mm-hmm. And then I think okay. the, the the next part is I feel that you know um I feel that Southeast Asia is uh tech and is is in the next uh growth phase now in the golden yes. age now especially um you know in Indonesia and especially in Vietnam Philippines where you know um venture capitalists and um, tech companies and you know Gojek uh Topet all these are investing uh heavily to you know um educate and uh, make this region more uh you know uh more like having more economic growth, right? Having the infrastructure investment and stuff. So for us, uh, right at our stage now, you know, we 
we are still we are still small, honestly. So we are we are we are leveraging on the the kind of like progress that they have made, um, as well. Yeah. So I would say that you know, um, I think, uh, we I think for some cities and some regions, it's it's still actually it's still very challenging to, um, you know, um, educate and teach the resellers yeah. on you know how exactly um to to use our app and how exactly to do a lot of um uh, functions there. So a lot of things we uh, we took we took for granted uh, basically yeah but in but I, I'm saying that you know uh, with all these investments uh and uh I, I believe these two areas, these areas will grow in the next uh five to ten years and uh, a lot of like reports and stuff have indeed kind of like, validated this uh this fact as well. Yeah, education is the main thing that most startups that working on when they are starting to branch out uh into more regions. So uh, I see your point about the education. Uh, so what next for Red S? Uh, is there any plan for expansion in other Southeast Asia country, or you are only focusing in Indonesia market so far? I think I think uh, that that is a question that other investors have um, you know often um, ask as well, right? You know, <laughs> okay. can, can we replicate you know this in other yes. Southeast Asia, uh, especially countries? Vietnam, right? Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Vietnam, uh, Philippines. But yes. honestly, in my opinion, um, uh, it is not so easy. You know, it, right. yeah, because uh, because uh, so we actually explored um Vietnam and Philippines as well. Uh, yeah. you know the the but um in in Vietnam, you know, the working with the government is uh, is a is a is a different challenge. But something Ooh. good something good is in in Indonesia is that you know um the government is uh, a very uh embracing yeah uh, embracing yeah it it, yeah. it recognizes that you know yes. um, tech and startups actually bring in a lot of like right. you know, social impact and. Uh, yes. Investments basically. I've I've been doing this for the last six years. I I see the the progress of our government embracing all the startups from Indonesia and outside Indonesia. So I can see your point. Yeah, correct. So then uh, I believe the most I believe the Indonesian government will take a uh, more uh, yeah. you know uh, flexible policy. Right? Let let you uh, let you guys just innovate and grow first, and then um when when you know when things get too big, and then we will start to you know work together okay. to uh, innovate. So I think that is something um uh, good. That I see compared to other 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 places. So, um, at least for us, you know, the next two to three years, we will definitely focus on uh, be focused in, uh, in Indonesia definitely because it is it is a, uh, it is a big market and it is uh, it's a growing market for yes. us definitely. and uh that there is there is a lot of uh, you know investment interest in uh, this sector as well. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. In terms of the technology, some investors mm-hmm. say that social commerce doesn't necessarily need advanced technology. How do you see that? Uh, what is your take on technology in platform like right app? Yeah, yeah. Then I think then, then the question to ask is, you know, what kind of uh, uh, uh what kind of technology is considered technology? Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. So so for us, we, it's it's quite simple. So um, we 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 consider ourselves a um a tech firm, but not really a deep tech firm. So yeah. for us, the the I would say we are more on a tech and bird firm right? because the the technology, the platform is really to help us do things better. Right? So, uh, one example that um we that I have is uh for instance, you know, um the 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 kind of like product feed that we are actually displaying to the reseller, right? Mm-hmm. So, um originally we started with um we have no um tech per se, right? So we 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 onboard the brand, we onboard the suppliers, we put in the products. So there is no personalization. There is no um. Uh, type preference uh, basically to what kind of yeah. seller you are, what kind of categories you are selling, and then uh, we slowly added in more and more uh, personalization algorithms to you know make make it more uh, suitable for you, even down to you know which city you are in, uh, which kind of like um city do you usually send to the customer, what kind mm-hmm. of like product categories do you actually um even browse and even sell to make it more useful for you guys. Yeah, so then uh, I think that is one good use of uh, technology uh, per se. So and I think another um, use for technology is uh is in fact um something different that I observed from China and uh, Indonesia is that in China um a lot of a lot of the factories and suppliers are actually quite digitized. You know they are quite um tech enabled already. So we yeah. can build our API with them, and you know um we can sync up data with them so easily. They have the catalog photos in, in um, so readily basically. Yeah. But um, what we observe here is that, you know, sometimes um, a lot of the effort has to be um, trying to help the brands, the supplies that we 
deal with to help them digitize their catalog photos to help them you know digitize some of their processes yeah so um, i think that is another use of like you know technology per se because uh, um, if not there would have to be a lot of like you know repeat work that we actually do with the supply per se yeah so i think the i think the 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 idea is that uh you know technology is uh it shouldn't just exist for the sake of you know yeah uh building building cool stuff like it has to help yeah. the the users and for us the users we consider them as the resellers and we consider them as the suppliers that actually work with us so um, personalization and basically helping them to um, teaching them to digitize you know some of the processes and some of the systems that we uh, work with yeah Okay, thank you so much, uh, Albert, for your time. And hopefully, uh, you, you can share uh, more news about Red S, right? Especially fundraising, maybe yeah, yeah, in the yeah. near future. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> we'll have good news to, to share uh, in the future. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your time. And I'll let you okay. get back to work, okay, Albert? Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye.